What's going on guys, it's Jimmy here. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how the Biden administration wants to pass stimulus checks, increase social security, but they also want to increase taxes. I'm gonna show you exactly what they wanna do and how it will affect you, especially with the higher taxes. First of all, from Joe Biden's official website, it says that he wants to provide for additional checks to families should conditions require. Now, this would mean another round of direct stimulus checks of at least $1,200 and checks for dependents. However, since then, the Biden administration and the Democrats have been pushing to get a stimulus check done now before the end of the year and another one again at the end of January. They've also said that they want to pass stimulus checks as long as needed and as many as needed, which means that there could be more than one going forward. And Vice President-elect Kamala Harris is actually one of the main proponents who introduced the $2,000 per month stimulus check plan until the pandemic is over and until we actually get back on our feet. In addition to this, Joe Biden wants to forgive a minimum of $10,000 per person of federal student loans as proposed by Senator Warren and colleagues. Young people and other student debt holders bore the brunt of the last crisis, and it shouldn't happen again. Now, in Elizabeth Warren, who is a top Democrat in the Senate, and also other top Democrats, they actually want to forgive up to $50,000 of a student loan debt, and they say that the president, either President Donald Trump or Joe Biden or any future president can do this simply with an executive order. They don't actually need to pass this through Congress because they're not printing new money. They're just forgiving debt that's already on the books. Now, in addition to this, the Joe Biden administration wants to increase Social Security payments for seniors. As you can see here on Joe Biden's official website, they want to increase monthly Social Security checks by $200 per month as proposed by Senator Wyden and colleagues saying that seniors and people with disabilities are uniquely at risk right now. Now, all that is pretty awesome for the average everyday American person. And I cover this and other details of the second stimulus check and stimulus package negotiations that are going on right now on this YouTube channel. So if you're new here, make sure to subscribe down below and click the bell icon so you don't miss out on new videos because I cover these stimulus checks and stimulus checks that are coming out right now from state and local programs. Also, don't forget to give this video a like down below. It really helps out our channel. However, the Joe Biden administration does want to raise taxes in several key areas that I'm going to tell you about right now. Now, these tax raises under the Joe Biden administration is likely going to affect a lot more people than think it will affect them. And let me give you the details. Okay, first of all, Joe Biden and his administration want to raise taxes on the top tax bracket. As you can see here on the screen, these are the current tax brackets for single filing taxpayers in the United States. The Joe Biden administration wants to raise this top tax bracket from 37% to 39.6%, what it used to be before the President Donald Trump tax cuts. However, Joe Biden has also said that he wants to raise these taxes for anybody over making over $400,000 per year, which actually could include the top two tax brackets. Now, remember those Social Security increases Joe Biden administration wants to increase Social Security payouts for people on Social Security and SSDI and railroad benefits of $200 per month. That's $2,400 per year. Well, that money has to come from somewhere and part of that money is going to come from an increase of Social Security taxes for people that make over $400,000 per year. See, right now you pay Social Security taxes only on the first $142,800 that you make. And from there, there's no more Social Security taxes. Social Security taxes are 12.4% of everything you make up until that $142,800. Now, if you have an employer, it's likely that they pay half of that, 6.2%, and then the employee pays 6.2%. Now, for anybody making over $400,000, 
this will likely kick back in this 12.4% tax on money made over $400,000. Now, a lot of people that make for over $400,000 are entrepreneurs and business owners, and they actually employ employees, and they help keep the economy going by giving people jobs. The, a lot of these people are not corporations because we're not talking about corporations here. We're talking about personal income tax. So if you are an employer, it, you're an entrepreneur or you own a small business that employs people, you get to pay that full 12.4% tax because you are the employee and the employer. The Biden administration wants to increase those taxes on money made over $400,000 to reapply the social security tax of 12.4% over that amount. Now, the problem with this is that anybody making that much money will not receive any additional benefits in social security for that additional money that they would pay in because they would already be over the capped amount that you could receive from social security. So this would be an additional 12.4% tax, or if you're an employee, 6.2%, with no benefit at all towards your social security earnings that you would get later on in life when you're retired. And 12.4% more taxes is a lot of money. We're talking about $12,400 in additional taxes per $100,000 made. Next up is the Joe Biden administration wants to increase the taxes on capital gains. Capital gains are typically something like a stock. When you buy a stock and sell a stock that you've held for over one year, that is taxed at a capital gains tax rate, which is typically lower at around 20%. Well, the Biden administration wants to tax this at regular tax rates. So basically, if you're in the top tax bracket, you would pay 39.7% instead of 20%. Now, again, Biden administration says he only wants to do this to the top earners, the wealthiest people out there. So if you're not one of the wealthiest people, then this likely won't affect you either. That's if they pass it in the current form and they don't pass it for all capital gains. Now, in addition to that, the Biden administration wants to get rid of certain tax cuts that President Donald Trump implemented. And the first one is an increase of taxes to corporations. Biden wants to get rid of the Trump tax cut on corporations, which is currently reduced down to 21%, and he wants to raise it back up to 28%. Biden also wants to implement a minimum tax for corporations because of corporations like Amazon, who can get away with paying $0 in federal tax on over $11 billion just in one year alone. Now, corporations do this through creative accounting and also previous losses on previous years that they carry forward and somehow end up going year after year after year without paying any federal taxes. Now, the other big controversial subject that the Biden administration wants to technically raise taxes on is by getting rid of the Trump tax cuts. Now, if Biden does get rid of the Trump tax cuts, it will raise taxes on the average everyday American, including lower and middle tax income brackets, because the Trump tax cuts had tax cuts pretty much across the entire board. So this cut will affect the majority of Americans by making them pay more taxes if this were to pass. Now, the reason this is, is because if you look at the Trump economics theory or the economic concept, is that they lower taxes on everybody. Americans and businesses. And what that does is it makes people spend more because if people have more money in their pockets, they can then spend it, which keeps the economy going. And all that money ends up going back to corporations anyways. And the money gets turned around faster and faster and faster. So less taxes actually means more money being spent, which comes back around in taxes anyways, because Every time you're earning money, you're paying taxes. You're paying sales tax. You're paying property tax. You buy a car, you pay tax. You're paying Social Security tax. You're paying Medicare tax. There's just way too much tax. So the Trump way of looking at things is basically they lower taxes across the board, and basically the money turns around faster because everybody has more money in their pockets to then spend and thus create more tax revenue by doing it that way. Now, this did work up until the pandemic 
because we pretty much had all-time stock highs and one of the best economies that most people could argue might be the best economy that we had seen to date before the pandemic. Well, then the pandemic hit and everything went crazy, but we did just hit another all-time stock high today with the Dow Jones reaching 30,000 just in the last few days. Now, what are my thoughts? Well, my thoughts are kind of a blend of both policies because I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I don't see things in black and white. I do see things kind of down the middle. So the first thing that comes to mind is I typically think that less taxes are better. You can let me know if you agree with me, but generally I think that we are taxed way too much. See, if you're one of the top earners, say you're an entrepreneur or a small business owner like me, and let's just say you're in the top tax bracket. You're going to pay 39.6% tax there. Then you're going to pay 15% Social Security and Medicare taxes. You're now at almost 45% already there. Then you're going to have state taxes, which in California is up to 13%. I'm in Ohio, so it's 5%. Now I'm already at 50% taxes. If you're in California, you're over 60% taxes. And then you have additional taxes like sales tax property tax, city tax. I pay 2% for city tax alone. And when you start to get over 50 or 60% of your money going to taxes, you're actually giving the government more money than you're giving yourself. It's almost like a penalty for being successful. Now, I do feel like people that make billions of dollars or even many, many, many millions of dollars should pay their fair uh, amount in taxes because those, those people typically have more money than they know what to do with and they can help pay their fair share. In addition, taxes do have to come from somewhere. So I'm actually a fan of the minimum income tax for uh, corporations that make over a certain amount, say $100 million a year. This way you won't affect your average everyday Joe who owns a small business, an Amazon store, they're a YouTuber, they're an entrepreneur, and they're out there hustling, they're out there working every day to support their family. But companies that make millions and millions and billions of dollars, such as Amazon, who made $11 billion and paid no taxes on it in just one quarter, they would pay their fair share of taxes, or at least a small share, which is only 15% of that minimum tax. And again, those are just my thoughts. I kind of lean in the middle there. I think that large corporations that make billions of dollars should pay at least a minimum tax of 15%. Remember, your successful entrepreneur people are, are paying 50 to 60% taxes. So for Amazon, who makes billions of dollars for them to pay 15% taxes, I don't think is unreasonable. But generally, I'm not a fan of more taxes at all except for in certain areas because somebody has to pay the taxes, but I don't think we should be penalizing successful people. Of course, that's just my point of view. You can let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Do you think the Trump way of paying less taxes all across the board is better? Or do you think the Biden way of raising taxes in multiple different areas and getting rid of tax cuts is a better way for the country to move forward? And don't forget to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on new videos like this and the second stimulus check coming out. Don't forget to like and share this video so others like you can see this video also. And you can click on this top video here to watch my newest video next. And this video teaches you how to start your own business selling products on Amazon FBA. I have dozens of students that have replaced their entire 9 to 5 income selling products on Amazon and I teach them how to do that. Click on one of those videos to watch them next. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next video.